So, with neural networks and training models breaking grounds in various areas of creative media, including three-dimensional spaces, and with constant need of character animation for various purposes, having a motion tool or platform where you can easily create motions without the hassle of complex setup or even creating these motions by hand might be a huge time saver for projects, and the folks at Deep Motion are doing just that, as they've just recently released Same Motion version 2.4, and this is a supercharged amazing tool of their very free open beta tool that was released sometime in March of 2024. And with this new update, you can now easily convert text to animation, conduct in painting, merge animation files together, and do a lot of interesting things. As this simply leverages of generative AI and a decade of physics simulation and digital being experienced. And all of this is combined to provide the depth and versatility of true character animation. And contrary to other generative platforms, Same Motion actually allows you create motions that you can use across different DCC tools. And today, we're going to simply explore this beautiful tool and see all of the cool things that you can do with it. And for those who like to follow up with this, all you need to do is go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can register and start working with it. And with that said, let's get right into it. So, with same motion simply open up right here, how you get to work with this is super easy. The very first things that you get to notice is we have a wonderful viewport, which you can simply move around and preview the character that we're working with. And to navigate this viewport is very simple, as with the left mouse button click and drag, you can orbit, and with the middle mouse button you can zoom in and zoom out. And to start creating motion, you need to go over to the motion prompt, and right here is where we can start entering the prompt we want to start creating motion. And in this example, what we want our character to do is a simple run and a jump. And once we have this ready, we can proceed to hit on generate animation, and this will generate the animation we want for our character. And with this ready, we now have two variations of motions that we can work with. We can preview what we want and select that. In this case, it's going to be variant 2 since this has a better representation of what we're going for. Before we talk about how you can start editing your animations, let's go through these other things that I believe a lot of you guys will need to know. First off, you can create multiple motions by clicking on the create new animation to create more. And of course, if you like to use custom models to actually drive your animations, you can also do that by going over to the character section and work with any of the three options that exist here. And first off is Ready Player Me. For those who would like to see a more detailed video about Ready Player Me, we've already covered a video about that alongside Avaton which is the second option that exists. For Ready Player Me, how this works is very easy, as once you have this loaded, you can start creating and customizing your characters how you want, and every inch of this character can be styled how you choose. And once you're done, you can simply click on Next and bring that right into Save Motion. And the same thing can also be said for Avaton, however, Avaton is a mobile app and for a more detailed video about this one, then link to that is going to be in the description. And the third option that is here is for you to be able to upload your own characters and work with them directly in same motion. One thing to keep in mind is if you're importing your own characters, they need to be in T-Pose. Another part of this tool that is super useful is PromptCraft. So if you go over to PromptCraft, this is where you can create an entire story by clicking on create new story, give the story a name and enter the story you would like to make. And once you enter the story and click on generate prompts, same motion will generate prompts related to the story that you've just made. And all of those prompts will create motions that would make that story come to life. And so to any of those prompts that you like to work with, all you need to do is to click on the plus sign to add them to library. You can now proceed to modify this or you can simply click on generate to get this going. You can either choose to enhance the prompt by clicking on prompt enhancer which will take a couple of seconds and enhance the prompt for you. And once you have that ready, the next thing you need to do is to click on generate animation. And this is going to process just like the previous animations that were made and generate animations related to the motions within the prompt. And the same thing can be done for all the other prompts as well. So to any of the prompts that you want to generate, you can simply click on generate animation and generate. It is also worth mentioning that for prompts that you've already generated before, you can still make some modifications and attach characters to them. So for example, once we get this prompt generated and maybe we would like to make modifications to both the animation and the character itself, what we can do is pretty simple. We can simply go over to the rerun and from here we can choose to change the character. Say maybe we like to change the avatar itself, we can change it to possibly the character we made before or you can use any of the pre-designed characters that exist here. So I'm just going to click on apply and if we want this to sort of use a physics filter, we can turn that on and we can also play with the motion smoothing if this is also something we want to do. And once you're ready, you can click on generate rerun to get this going. And once we have this, you can tell that the animation looks better and we have that physics working for it. And this is how you can start modifying your animations and characters right inside of same motion. 
And if you'd like to perform more edits to your character or your animation, you can simply go ahead and select any of them and start performing the edits. So first off, we're just simply going to go ahead and turn this off and we can go over to edit. So within the edit tab, you do have in painting, merge, loop and refine. And what in painting actually allows you to do is to either extend or edit some attributes of your animations by adding some stuff in there. And so a very simple example that we can explore is making our character raise one hand up when they're done with running as opposed to jumping. And to do this is by simply clicking on the in painting button and we can select the clip, make sure that we have it positioned exactly where we want it and enter a prompt that says we want the character to raise the hand. And once we're done, we can click on save. Now, once you save this, you can also generate the animation and this is going to process the entire thing, but the original and the in painting command that you've given and generate a brand new set of animations for you. And once we do our playback, you can see that our character raises one hand up. It is quite interesting how much things you can do with the in painting feature. So if you're thinking about extending or possibly after the run, would like our character's hand to stay down instead of raising up, we can simply use the in painting tool to do that. Something else which is also very interesting to see is merge. So with the merge tool, you can simply merge various animation together. So if we go all the way back, actually let's jump out of the merge and go all the way back right here. I would like to start off with this one because the animation that you select is the one that you get to start off with. And I'm gonna just simply vote number two, turn this off, go over to edit, click on merge, and we would like to start merging other animations. So I'm gonna click on this button and what we'd like to do is to merge that with say story three. So we can click on that and that gets added in. And if we press the playback button, we can go one. And there's also another motion here for the clicking. At this point, you can only merge two animations. So what we can do is once we have this ready, once we click on generate animation, the tweening and also root joint positioning of both animations will be fixed. And once that is complete, if you press your playback button, you would notice that we have the animation working exactly how we want it. So you can merge multiple motions together. So instead of taking these to other DCC apps to start doing this, you can do all of that inside of same motion. Same motion also supports animation looping. So for example, if you like to loop a particular animation, what you can do is to simply test out the animation first, see what you've got, and you can go over to edit go over to the loop and from here you can choose how much time you want your animation to be looped so we can add as many of these and we can either choose to lock the roots to a particular point or allow horizontal blending in this case i will lock the root and we can proceed to blend rotation and possibly blend altitude and once we've got this ready we can click on generate animation and this will process the animation and give us a looped animation based on the parameters and also the number of seconds that we selected and with this ready once we press the playback button you can see that we've got our character running in one particular position because we said we wanted it to be fixed and you can also tell that we now have a longer time compared to what we had before so we can go through make as many loopable animations that we want and if you'd like to use this to create animation for games or possibly you like to use it for creating animations for your 3d projects then you can go ahead and use this and do all that something else which is also quite interesting that you can do with same motion is refining your animation so for example we have a merge jump and run what we can do is to go over to edit go over to refine animation and from there we can choose to play with the creativity now the more you increase the creativity that is how much the ai is going to influence what is going to happen and for those who like to play with the variants this will give you multiple variations of the same result so maybe you want to get about four or five you can simply crank that up in our case we're going to keep this at three and what we want is to make our character jump high and next we click on refine and this is going to process and refine the animation and once this is done you notice that we have three variations of our animation and with this ready you can now export this and use it in any of the dcc app of choice that you've always wanted to work with and to get this out is as easy as going over to export and you can go all the way down and select through the file types that exist and export the specific one that you want. If you also like to export the MP4 version of this, you can also turn this on, hit on generate to generate that and you can download that as well. And this is basically how you can go from prompt to creating animations that you can use in various DCC apps.
So this is it. For those who like to try this, Same Motion currently has a free tier which you can use to try out and explore Same Motion. The same thing is also said for Anime 3D which is their AI motion capture from video tool which allows you to throw in a video and generate motions from it. And for those who like to try these tools, then of course links to this is going to be in the description so do well to check them out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.